Seven years later, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt is still a staggering achievement, and thanks to the next-gen update, it's better than ever. The free update packs in visual enhancements, fresh content, and new features, as well as an extra coat of polish. Whether you've played The Witcher 3 or not, it's the perfect time to explore the Northern Realms. Welcome to GameSpot's video review of The Witcher 3's next-gen release. Back in 2015, Kevin Van Ord published GameSpot's original review and awarded it a 10 out of 10. Spoilers, it's still a 10 out of 10, and in this review, we won't be covering the same ground he did seven years ago. Instead, think of this as an addendum to his review that focuses on all the new stuff. While the core experience is unchanged, CD Projekt Red has made a number of thoughtful tweaks and additions that further elevate The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, the most noticeable one being the visual enhancements. On PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X, The Witcher 3 has two separate graphics modes, performance and ray tracing. Performance mode renders the game at a constant 60 frames per second, while ray tracing mode limits the frame rate to 30, but features ray trace lighting. I've spent most of my time with the PS5 version in performance mode. Ray tracing mode adds more texture and depth to the world and its interiors, but the rock solid frame rate makes performance mode more preferable, especially when it comes to combat. Rolling around the battlefield, countering enemies and casting signs feels smooth and responsive, and thankfully, the performance mode doesn't come at the expense of resolution, at least as far as I can tell with the naked eye. Both modes utilize a dynamic resolution to ensure smooth presentation, so the only thing really missing in performance mode is the ray trace lighting. The ray tracing, while subtle, is still impressive. Interiors are the most noticeably impacted by the feature. Light sources cast deeper and more realistic shadows onto characters and surfaces to create a warmer, more authentic scene. Outdoors, you can see the effects of it on surfaces, particularly the reflections on puddles and large bodies of water. It's hard to recommend one setting over the other, as both have their advantages and disadvantages. The performance option better suits my playstyle and taste, but if frame rate isn't all that important to you, then ray tracing might be the way to go. Of course, the PC version offers the best of both worlds, provided you have a capable rig. There are a few more ray tracing options to play around with, as well as an ultra plus graphics setting. I haven't been able to test the PC version yet, but I'm eager to see how good this world can look on a state of the art PC. The real showstopper is the new photo mode. While it may not be as robust as contemporary photo modes, it highlights just how gorgeous the world is and accentuates the improved visuals. You can activate photo mode by pressing in both analog sticks at any time outside of cutscenes. The camera is snappy and responsive and lets you tweak the FOV, the tilt, and a number of other visual effects. Unfortunately, you can't adjust time of day and weather or alter Geralt's facial expressions and poses. It's a bummer, but the basics are more than enough to capture breathtaking vistas and bloody action. The next-gen version also introduces new camera modes that are tighter on Geralt, giving a more intimate, over-the-shoulder perspective. While this camera may not be as practical as the wider default camera, it's impossible for me to go back. The world is so detailed, and just being a little closer to the action it gives the experience more weight. The environmental storytelling is easier to parse, character details are more noticeable, and enemies look even more vicious when they are right in front of your face. Oddly enough, the improved visuals, the new photo mode, and alternate camera angles have changed the way I play The Witcher 3. I've always appreciated the beauty of that world, but I am moving at a slower, more deliberate pace. I am less concerned with the question marks on the map and more interested in exploring the world in front of me, stumbling on side quests and points of interest naturally. It's far more satisfying to happen upon a rare set of armor tucked away in a cave than it is to plot a direct path to that same cave via the map. This playstyle is further supported thanks to the new map filters and HUD settings. If you'd like, you can remove all the exclamation points and question marks off the map and let your curiosity guide you. You can even set it so the mini-map only appears when you activate your Witcher senses, which paired with the closer camera angles gives exploration a cleaner, more cinematic feel. The next-gen update also adds a new side quest that feels right at home in The Witcher 3. It introduces a couple of characters and takes place in an underutilized landmark in Velen. There are a few more surprises which I won't spoil, but upon completion you gain access to the Netflix-inspired gear. 
When CD Projekt Red revealed that they'd be bringing Netflix-inspired gear to The Witcher 3, I was trepidatious. The world of The Witcher 3 is such a well-thought-out and focused experience. The Netflix series, by comparison, is not, at least in my opinion. I was concerned that this quest and equipment might water down the experience. Fortunately, that isn't the case. While I still don't plan on using Cavill's Witcher gear, the quest itself is a welcome inclusion that gives context to the new gear and how it ended up in CD Projekt Red's interpretation of this world. Even if you don't plan on replaying The Witcher 3 from start to finish, I recommend loading up an old save just to check this out. At the very least, it's worth it to hear Doug Cockle reprise his role to deliver some new lines as the White Wolf. Desperate times call for a witcher, huh? Thought your church frowned upon our kind. Mutants. The only major change to the gameplay is quick sign casting. If you have it turned on, you can hold down R2 or right trigger and press one of the face buttons or L2 to quickly cast a sign. It took some getting used to, but it's now my preferred way of sign casting. It's nice being able to throw up a Quen right before battle by holding R2 and pressing circle, and then immediately setting my foes on fire with a shot of Igni by holding R2 and pressing L2. While it may take some time to build up the muscle memory, it's a small change that does streamline the combat quite a bit, especially on harder fights that might have you swapping signs often. Overall, The Witcher 3's next-gen update is an impressive collection of new features, tweaks, and enhancements that make one of the best RPGs in the last decade even better. If you've never played The Witcher 3, consider this a sign to finally give it a shot. And if you've already played it, there's still enough here for the experience to feel fresh.